22 years ago, I sat in this beautiful U.S. Embassy building here in Tokyo and took a test to try, for the fifth time, to become an American diplomat. Today, as a senior diplomat assigned as the Minister Counselor for Management Affairs, I feel so grateful to be back in the country that gave me the three gems I needed to succeed. Do you have a dream that has been in your mind for a long time? Maybe these three gems can help you too. First, let me briefly take you back to the beginning of my diplomatic journey. I was 12 years old, and the 1980 Winter Olympics were being held in my home state of New York. At the Lake Placid Winter Games, Hani Wenzel, an amazing Lichtensteinian skier, won two gold medals and a silver medal. Her performance was so incredible, and I was deeply moved by the idea that a country of 26,000 people existed, let alone could send a gold medal winner to the Olympics. I'm a Yankees fan. And I was shocked to learn that Liechtenstein's entire population did not fill half of Yankee Stadium. At this moment, it made me want to know more about the world and other such countries. During my sophomore year in college, I walked into the career counseling office and found a brochure about the Foreign Service. It talked about careers working in U.S. embassies and consulates around the world as a diplomat. I was totally ignorant of such things. Yet it seemed like the perfect fit for my interest in the world's people and cultures. It was then that I decided what I wanted to do. I started taking the test to become a diplomat right after college. At that time, the Foreign Service exam consisted of two parts. The first part was a written exam offered at sites throughout the United States and U.S. embassies and consulates around the world. The second part was an all-day series of written and oral exercises offered in a few large cities around the United States. The first time I took the written examination, I failed. What was most discouraging in my results is that they gave me a grade of zero on my biographical information, a zero for my biography. I had zero international experience, zero foreign languages, nothing they seemed to be looking for. Despite this setback, I kept on trying to reach my goal. Meanwhile, life continued. Three testing failures later, I had a wife, a house, two children, and I was trying to build a good life. One day in frustration, my wife Susan said to me, you said we would see the world, and all I've seen is New York. She was right. We went to college near New York City, got married and honeymooned in the Finger Lakes region of New York, got our first apartment in Albany, the capital, and bought a house and had our children in Schenectady, New York. She really had seen only New York. I decided that if I was going to become a diplomat, I needed to fix that zero on my biography. So I applied for the Japan Exchange and Teaching Program, or JET. In July 1997, we came to Japan with our three-year-old son, Avery, and our one-year-old daughter, Amelia. We were sent to a beautiful town with old samurai houses and a long tunnel of cherry blossom trees along the Hinokanai River. That town is called Kakunodate in Akita Prefecture. There I taught as an assistant language teacher, ALT, in the town's two high schools. There, my personal and professional transformation began and the culture of the Akita people was about to reshape my future. The people of Kakunorate gave me three gems. The first gem was humility. In Japan, when you enter a room, you must announce your presence and departure by saying, Shitsure shimasu. It means, let me be allowed to bother you or pardon my rudeness. Coming from a place where one is expected to have a confident swagger, such a humble statement would seem strange, and perhaps even insincere. Yet in a country where humility is the starting point of manners and civility, it is an acknowledgement that your presence is going to create a disturbance, and that the environment of the room will again suffer a change that could cause discomfort when you leave. This kind of humility was new for me, and learning to live among Kakunodate people would require me to learn it well. I came to realize in time that humility is the very key to connection in a great many cultures throughout the world, and it has been essential to my success in diplomacy. I learned ways to demonstrate my humility 
by having a willingness to admit and share my own mistakes as learning points to help others, for example. Humility from an American diplomat sometimes surprises people, but it is almost always appreciated. The second gem Kakunodate gave me is the Japanese cultural concept of gaman. Gaman is explained as the ability to work and endure with patience and dignity. In Akita, epic snowfalls in January and February are normal. I remember the first time I saw a huge snowfall in Kakunodate. More than a foot of snow had fallen overnight, and I thought there's no way the schools could be open. It was too much snow for the buses and trains to move, I thought. How would the teachers and students get to work if the roads were covered in snow? So I stayed home. At 8.15, my phone rang. Mato-sensei, where are you? Said the voice at the other end of the phone. I quickly understood that Akita people never cancel school because of snow. They endure the snow with patience and dignity and always keep moving forward. It is the dictate of Gaman. It offers that only through patience can objectives be achieved and to lose patience is a sign of weakness. In diplomacy, patience is something absolutely essential to bridging cultural differences. Not getting frustrated with other people's varying concepts of time and ways of expressing themselves could sometimes be difficult. Gaman taught me patience and to let unfamiliar situations wash over me rather than deter me. To just keep moving forward, even if you are not familiar or not perfectly comfortable. The third gem I'll mention relates to the Akita way of speaking and listening. Akita people are famous in Japan for speaking a dialect in which they do not open their mouths much to speak. To say please eat in Japanese, you would say tabe nasai, tabe nasai, five syllables. In Akita Ben, you say ke. You have to listen very carefully or you'll miss it and maybe miss dinner. By listening, Akita people can hear the rushing water of the Hinokanai River, the crows and the kite birds, the leaves rustling in the wind, the call to dinner, and the words and ideas being expressed. They hear more because they listen more closely. Diplomats build connections between nations and cultures, and the only way to do that is to understand what is truly important to all the parties involved. That understanding comes from listening. In Kakonorate, I learned how to listen. In 1998, empowered with newfound humility, gaman, and listening skills, I took the night bus from Kakonorate to Tokyo's Hamamatsucho station. From there, I went to the U.S. Embassy in Akasaka and took the Foreign Service exam for the fifth time in my life. It was my first time entering a U.S. Embassy. I was exhilarated and I passed. In early 1999, I flew to San Francisco for the second part of the exam, and this time I succeeded. Kakanorate had transformed me from biographical zero to diplomat. My first day at work as a Foreign Service officer was May 6, 2000. As I walked into the room that first day, I was scared. I had read my colleagues' biographies, many of whom spoke multiple languages, and had years and years of international experience. I felt like I was the dumbest person in the room and wondered if I really belonged. Maybe I was still too inexperienced, but perhaps no longer a zero because I had the three gems acquired during my stay in Kakunorate. A little more than a year later, armed with French language and technical training and my black diplomatic passport, I reported with my family for my first assignment in Yaoundé, Cameroon. A wise ambassador there told me that to accomplish our mission, he needed me to work very hard every day, and that genuinely effective diplomats accept the possibility that sometimes they just might be wrong. In other words, be humble. Armed with my three gems, I built relationships with people and started to get things done. My journey as a diplomat had taken off quite smoothly. Nevertheless, I was not promoted quickly. And even after two years there, I still felt behind many of my colleagues. From Yaoundé, I went to Paris and then Washington, D.C. 
And then I accepted a very difficult assignment to Asmara Eritrea in the Horn of Africa. The relationship between the United States and Eritrea at that time was very challenging. Eritrea was a country where we faced many restrictions, and the other diplomats present often felt discouraged. Gaman had taught me to not become discouraged, but to continue moving forward as best you can. When the Eritrean people and officials saw my Gaman spirit, they began to share their culture and stories, and as a result, I found ways to make things a little better between our countries. My work there led to my being promoted. Then I was assigned to Amman, Jordan, where many members of my staff were Palestinian. Being Jewish on my mother's side of the family, I had some preconceived prejudices about the Palestinians. Still, by listening carefully, I came to appreciate the broad diversity of ideas I heard from them. I felt their pain and longing of being separated from family members in the West Bank. Using relationships I developed with the Israelis, some staff members visited their families, some of whom they had never even met because of security-related restrictions. These Palestinian staff members were so grateful, and they did fantastic work in support of the United States government that led to my getting promoted again. Suddenly, my career was advancing well because of my three gems. After Jordan, I went back to the U.S., earned a master's degree, and then did another Washington assignment. The past experiences in different countries led to my being selected as the Deputy Chief of Mission for our embassy in Cameroon. There, I was nominated for the James A. Baker Award as Deputy Chief of Mission of the Year. Those achievements led to my being promoted into the Senior Foreign Service. From a biographical zero, I had become a senior diplomat and was nearing the pinnacle of my profession. My career has allowed me to visit many countries, even Liechtenstein and travel around the world. I've met presidents and prime ministers, movie stars, sports legends, great artists and scientists and business leaders. Susan and I raised our children in six countries on four continents and they learned to love people of all races and religions without prejudice. I've given my wife the life I promised when I asked her to marry me when we were college students together. My persistence and the three gems have made all the difference. In July 2018, I had the honor of returning to Japan, this time not as a biographical zero ALT Matthew Smith, but as senior diplomat Matthew Smith, possessed with humility, gaman, and the ability to listen carefully. I'm responsible for all personnel, money, systems, health, real estate and facilities, logistics such as travel and transportation, and support for the U.S. Olympic efforts related to Tokyo 2020. I'm based in Tokyo, but my work takes me to our consulates in Osaka, Naha, Fukuoka, Nagoya, Sapporo, and our language school in Yokohama. I've been blessed to be in Japan for the coronation of a new emperor, and thus the introduction of a new era, the Reiwa era. Coming back to Japan and revisiting Akita is a reminder of a moment in time in my life when potential and possibility were shaped, shaped by kindness and natural beauty, and teachings that are timeless. I could never have predicted the path I would take to make real my dream of becoming a successful diplomat. I certainly feel lucky to have found a place that taught me to be humble, to endure with patience and without complaint, to keep moving forward even when a meter of snow stands in your way, to listen to all the beautiful sounds of the earth, including silence, to build connections that have endured the challenges of time, distance and busyness. These gifts from Kakunodate have given me my best life, the life I dreamed about when I was a college student. I will always feel grateful to the people of the little Kyoto of Minshiku, Kakunodate. Thank you.